This time, they had him. This time, he would not get away. This time, they had him in a foolproof trap. They caught a woman in the act of adultery. What about the man, you might ask? Well, it's not about him. It's not really about her either. No, this is really all about Jesus. They threw her before him, exposed, and said, what shall we do with her? There were only two options they could see. Stone her to death as the law of Moses commanded. To do anything less would set him at odds with the very law of God. But for him to command her execution would make him a criminal in the eyes of Rome, since, by their own admission, only the Romans could exact capital punishment. Either way, they had him. Either way, he was finished. Either way, he was dead. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But that Jesus, he's a slippery one. They demanded a verdict, but instead he wrote in the dirt with his finger. What did he write? I don't know, their names, their sins. Maybe he just doodled to show them that he would not be forced into a rash, sinful decision. They pressed him again until finally he stood and he spoke. And when he spoke, his words cut them down to size. Let any of you who is without sin cast the first stone. It's here that we see the greatness of the master. They could only see two ways, and both of those ways would lead to his destruction, but he found the third way. He didn't have to. Being sinless, he could have started the stoning. Instead, he showed the third way, love, forgiveness, grace. Imagine her standing there in the dust, trying to cover her shame, closing her eyes against the blows, hearing the stones hit the ground and wondering why they all seemed to miss. They weren't being thrown. They were being dropped. As guilt and shame beat down prideful arrogance, then silence. She opened her eyes to see the look of love. Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She looked around. She couldn't believe it, but they were all gone. No one, sir. And Jesus said, then neither do I condemn you. And he, the righteous judge, was the only one who actually could have, but instead he gave a simple command. A command for her, a command for us. Go and sin no more. I heard it on the radio yesterday. A man was commenting on this story, and his commentary had me praising the Lord. He asked the question, Which are you, Jesus or the Pharisees? Now the truth of the matter is I have asked myself that question over and over again. The answer I want to give is Jesus, forgiving, full of grace, loving, caring. My fear, though, is there are times when I, if I am not careful, can be like the judgmental Pharisees. How can I leave that attitude behind is a frequent battle in my heart. The commentator gave me the answer. You're neither the Pharisees nor Jesus. You are the woman. It was this phrase that brought my praise. It was the answer to the cry of my heart. The reason I fear like being like the Pharisees is because I'm not as good as Jesus. I've been caught in sin. Now, maybe not adultery, though by Jesus' definition that can be a fight as well, but sin most definitely. I've been caught in sin. I've been dragged before Jesus by the accuser of my soul. I have only one move, to kneel before my Lord, ask forgiveness, and turn from my sin. In the story, I'm the woman. 
And until I can see myself in that place, I run the very real risk of becoming one of the accusers. I want to be like Jesus. And so like the woman in the face of condemnation, I receive his grace and do my best in him to leave my sin behind. The ultimate sin of the Pharisees is pride. The very sin that made the devil fall. If I stand as an accuser, I become like the accuser. And my sin is right there to convict me. So I guess what I'm saying is, in this story, I'm the woman. And I want to be like Jesus. Jesus.